we hold it very important to talk about God okay. and the oneness of God because in the Quran, are you familiar with the Quran? Have you ever read the Quran? I've read portions of the Quran, okay. but not the complete uh, Quran. What part of the Quran have you actually read? I'm not sure. No, I'm gonna go. Yes, yes so okay. I'm not sure saying. which parts, my friend, uh, but I have read. Obviously, I was with my father at that time, so I was reading portions of it, so I don't know this is what I read. This so what has your father, what has your father actually taught you about Islam? Other than what you hear about on the news and on the media, what do you, what do you actually know? What's your name, brother? Ridwan. Ridwan. Oh my God, Ridwan. Yes. Lovely name. Praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> Lovely name, Ridwan. Who, who named you Ridwan? Yes. Uh, my father. Your father named you Ridwan. Alhamdulillah. It's a nice name. I like that name. Okay, now, 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 now check this. What do you know about Islam? Let me tell you about my experience with Muslims. Go for it. Okay. So, because my father is a Muslim, all his family are Muslim and I love all of them and all of them are trying by their best efforts to do what is right in the sight of the Almighty okay my family don't believe in killing 10 or 30 or 50 people and saying that is what Almighty wants they don't believe that they don't believe in, in some of the uh, propaganda that we see on television today trying to pin Islam or make Islam. Do you believe this? I don't believe it. Okay, alhamdulillah. Do you understand? That's good because some Christians, they believe what the media tells them no, without no, 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 actually no, no. looking into Islam objectively. Do you understand? No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Okay, fine. So I respect and I, and I love my family and I respect what they're doing. Um, obviously, we have differing views and that's why when I come to speak even here at Speaker's Corner, <laughs> I'm trying not to be... Uh, it's not like I'm trying to avoid talking about Christ or God. Well, why, why do you ignore... I'm not saying you ignore this subject, Ridwan, yeah. but why do you seem to avoid this very subject? Is it because... Maybe because you were born as a Muslim and you feel that if I talk about this, it's going to bring back memories or something like this? What's the reason why you okay, I'm going to tell avoid you why. this very important question? I'm going to tell you why. I'm interested. I want to know. The reason why I, me in particular, chooses not here to talk about it here yeah. is because, number one, a Muslim here believes in the Quran. I believe in the Bible. There's a problem there because there's prophets that I believe in which the Muslim does not accept. Do okay. you understand? Like, give me some examples. Ezekiel, Daniel, okay. Hosea. So when I start quoting from Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, there's a problem because the Muslim doesn't accept those prophets. You understand what I'm saying? So okay. for me now to come and talk about Jesus or about God now, it's going to make no sense because my brother is trying to share with me the errors of the Bible. And I'm saying, look, Rizwan, I respect you. Rizwan, yes. do you know, do you know the, the most important subject that we should speak about is the oneness of God? Not necessarily the contradictions of the Bible. Personally, I don't like to go from this, this particular route. I think it's dangerous and I think it sets a very bad precedence if we start talking about the contradictions. Because what I've noticed, when you start speaking, I know some Muslims here, they do it. They talk about the contradictions. One verse says this and it conflicts with this verse. Another verse says this, it conflicts with that verse. And then what that basically does, that creates animosity, that creates exactly. hatred between two people. This is the reason why I do not bring up the contradictions of the Bible, right? That's number one. Number two, the most important subject to speak about is the oneness of God. The oneness of God. Whether God is three, whether God is two, three, four, five, this is the most important subject that needs to be addressed, right? And the reason, brother, why this is important, okay. because in the Quran, Allah tells us that we should worship Him alone and have no other associates associations with him. Okay. I'll give an example. In the Quran, Allah says, Inna ni an Allah, Verily, I am Allah. La ilaha illahu. There is no other God besides me. Okay. So worship me. Yes. Wa akimu yeah. and establish prayer for my remembrance. Okay. So we know that worshiping the Creator. Yes. In the way He wants us to worship Him. Okay. Is very very important. Would you deny that worshiping God how He wants us to worship Him is the correct way? Would you deny this? No no no. Okay. I don't deny. I agree one hundred percent with that statement. Okay. Fine. Do you want to say something? Forward? Well, I just wanted to say, um, okay, finish what you're saying rather, or on that note, continue what, what you're saying. Because okay. Right. In Islam, as well as in 
and Judaism and even Christianity, right? The most important thing that us Muslims we have to do is we have to worship the God alone. Meaning, we're not allowed to worship Christ because we, as you know, Ridwan, you know that we believe that Prophet uh, Jesus is, is a prophet and we don't worship prophets of God. Okay. You know, okay. we see Jesus as the prophet of the, uh, the prophet to the children of Israel. For example, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Uh, it says, I was not sent except unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. So Jesus was sent to the children of Israel. The Quran confirmed this. In the Quran, Allah says, uh, قَالَ إِيسَى بُنُ مَرْيَمْ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Verily, O children of Israel, verily I am the messenger of God unto you. Okay. So we affirm that Jesus is the prophet of God to the children of Israel. But we do not affirm that he is God himself. This is one thing that we deny Ridwan. And the reason why we deny this is because we accept Jesus. We accept Jesus' humanity. Okay. Right? For example, in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Jesus says, Hear Israel, uh, he says, Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Yeah. Jesus is a man approved by God, by wonders and signs and miracles that he done amongst yeah, you, yes. that you yourselves know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you, man? You're right. Good, good. I just wanted to make sure that you're speaking to a Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't worry. He's been certified. <laughs> yes. Trinitarian? Are you a Trinitarian? I am a. Tr I, 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 I don't want to say I'm a Trinitarian because Trinity is not biblical. The Godhead is biblical. It's not Christian, Father, sorry. Son, and Holy I'm Ghost. I'm coming up to say that he's not a Christian, so don't title it Muslim versus Christian. He's not a Christian. Okay, he's that's fine. He's a Christian. That's faith. That, that's he's okay. not Trinitarian. Okay. I think wow. it's respect, no? I think it's that's respect. fine. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My friend, if you class yourself as a Christian, who am I to say that you're not? Well, look. This, Personally, I don't think that wasn't that wasn't right for what he said. But anyway, anyway, yeah, 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 doesn't yeah, yeah. matter. Now, so far, are you with me? What I'm saying? So yeah, far? yeah, 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 yeah. Do you disagree with what anything that I said so far? Of, of, of course. Like this is this is the issue. You know. Um, obviously, we can discuss. But the problem we're always going to have is, as I said to you before, is I'm sharing with you from Old Testament prophets. Okay. And because. Muslims don't accept um, uh, Old Testament prophets the way I do. There's going to be a contradiction somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, I see Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Bible. It says there's going to come one who we should refer to as wonderful counselor, mighty God. The mighty God, the one who is born of Mary is that mighty God. Then the, the prophet Micah in the Old Testament, yeah. in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, it says that the birthplace of, the, of, of Jesus is going to be Bethlehem, but it says he is from old, from everlasting. So the Bible actually says Jesus is everlasting. That word everlasting is only used in the Bible for God. It's not used for man, right. not used for angels. It's only used for God. So for me, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, I see that Jesus is divine. In other words, he's part of the Godhead. So my brother here is incorrect. Uh, or let me not say that. That's his view. My view is that I see in the Bible a Godhead made up of three persons, separate persons, yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yeah. So that's my opinion and my belief. But I understand where Muslims are coming from. As I said, my family are, my, my family are Muslim. My family are Muslim. So, and I, I respect the Muslim belief here. Yeah. But obviously there's going to be a Okay, Rizwan, you see, you quoted Isaiah 9 6. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Right. It says, Unto us a child is given, yeah. unto us a child is born. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, right? Yes. Mighty God, yes. Everlasting Father. Correct? That's right. That's right. First of all, right, the word Mighty God is different to saying the almighty God. Okay. Right? They're two separate wordings. Okay. The word almighty God in Hebrew is El Shaddai. Okay. El Shaddai. Okay. Which means almighty God, but it's almighty God in reference to the Father. Right. Right? Right. Are you with me so far? Yes. Yes. Do you, would you disagree with this? I'm, I'm going to disagree because even if I leave my, my, uh, the mighty God out, first of all, we don't refer to any human being as God. So even for Isaiah, just to put God there, 
It's like Thomas in the New Testament. Not necessarily. The reason why is because Moses, for example, is called Elohim, right? If we go to Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, yeah. it says, Do you not see we shall make you a God unto Pharaoh? So the word Elohim okay. is used here. In fact, if we go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it says, Barashit bara Elohim. In Hebrew, it says, In the beginning, God. The word Elohim yeah. is used here, yeah. which is the same Elohim that is used for Moses in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. Right. So, now the thing is, we're not going to then say that Moses is God. We should prostrate. We should bow down to him. We should worship him. Of course. No, this is this is polytheism. This is like idol worshiping, right? Okay. And we're not allowed to do any idol worship. Yeah. Also, um, the devil is called God. Are you aware of this? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. In First Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Right? It yeah. says that the devil is the god of this world. Okay, but that's the god of this world. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, but hold on one second. The yeah. reason why I'm trying to bring this to your attention yeah. is because when we say God, yes. we say that the only true God, yes. according to the prophets, is Allah. The true God, John 17, verse 3. Who does Jesus identify as the only true God He's in the Bible? to the Father then. Okay. But my question is to you, Ridwan. Who does the Father identify as the only true God in the Bible? Well, we know that the Father is known in John 17 verse 3 as the only true God. However, when we look at the scripture as a whole, the Bible as a whole, for example, in Matthew 14, no, let's look at Matthew 2, Matthew 2, Matthew 14, Matthew 28. Well, the men from the east came to where Jesus was in his birth. They worshipped him. Matthew 14, they were in the boat, they worshipped him. John chapter 9, they worshipped him. So hold on a second. Acts chapter 10, Peter, a man who came in touch with Cornelius, because God sent Peter to Cornelius, or Cornelius to Peter. He was a Gentile, he was a Roman. When he comes in the house, he falls down, he worships Peter. Peter says, hold on, get up, I'm a man like you. Yeah. So Jesus didn't stop anybody, but no, that's not even the, the, the last of it. Revelation chapter 22, the angel, he says, John wrote the book of Revelation. John falls down to worship before the angel. The angel says, don't worship me, worship God. So in the Bible, we find time and again, in the New Testament, and because Jesus came in the New Testament, Jesus receives worship, and not on one occasion does he say, Stop there, don't do that. Okay. Jesus, even in his humanity, accepted he accepted the worship of uh, human beings. But more than that, in Mark chapter 2, Jesus is sitting in the house. He says something which no human being can say. What he says, your sins are forgiven. How can Jesus say your sins are forgiven? That's why the Jews said, let's stone this man. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Okay. Even in his humanity, Jesus left heaven. He left his divinity. He had to live as a man. Why? And let me explain this because most people when they're recording or when they're listening to me, they, they, don't, they don't understand this concept. Jesus had to lay aside his divinity. What does that mean? When he healed people, he had to do that by faith in his father. Because if he, if he used power that we don't have available, then he had a power that we, we can't have. You okay. understand? I understand. So okay. anyway, that's that's my thoughts okay, on, on Christ's divinity. Okay, one thing I want to bring to your attention, Ridwan, yeah. is that you said in the Bible that Jesus had the ability to forgive sins. Yes. Right? That's number one. Number two, that he received worship and he didn't object. That's yes. what you said, right? Yes. Now, first of all, I want to bring you back to what I said in John 17, verse 3. Okay. Jesus identifies the Father as the only true deity worthy of worship. He said, you are the only true true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So according to you, you've agreed with me that Jesus identified the Father as the only true God. That's point number one. Point number two. Yeah, do you want to go, go further down? Let's go further down. Let's go, because this, this guy is... Eh? I know, it's a bit loud here. Yeah. Go on, let's go near the fence over there. Yeah, 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 I didn't really want to. It's just because this noise is crazy. Okay, come on then. Do you want to actually move the camera shots? Yeah, just face it this way, yeah. And then just move the other two, isn't it? Over there, over there. Where? Sorry about this, Red One. It's just because the noise. No problem, no worries.
sometimes what happens fights sometimes to be there yeah yeah spring the circus see this is exactly what I was trying to avoid I don't come to speak as for the fight. No, do I, honestly. Oh, I come to have peaceful conversation, like yourself, Ridwan. Go home and watch The Simpsons. Amen. <laughs> anyway. Okay, go on, brother. Anyway, Ridwan. Other points that I would like to raise is that, obviously, John 17, verse 3. Okay. It says that this is life eternal. Yes. That they may know the, the that you, the God, only true God, and, and Jesus, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay. okay. That's point number one. Yeah. Point number two is that you mentioned that Jesus received worship and did not object. Yes. Right. Now, can you tell me the word worship in Greek? I don't know the word worship in Greek. No. Okay. Yeah. So if, for example, yeah. if I prostrate it to you right now, yeah. Does it mean that I'm taking you as a God? No, no, it doesn't mean. Okay, why do you, if, okay, so if I prostrate it to, to you now, right now, yes. right? Why do you think I'm not taking you as a God? Because it could be out of respect or courtesy. Right, good. Yeah. The Greek word used here is yeah. proskunio. Right. Proskunio yeah. means to pay homage. Yes. It doesn't mean worship. Yes. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, if you want to be consistent and say that Jesus is God yes. because he received worship and didn't object, yes. then you have to say that Daniel is God. Because okay. Daniel, or Prophet David, Daniel in uh, Daniel chapter 2, yes. actually, let me, let me ring it out for you. Let me ring yeah, it out for read you. It, read I'm going to read it. It's yes. better I read it for you because then at least yeah. you can see uh, I'm not making this up or something. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Uh, I believe it's in Daniel chapter 2 verse 46 okay go go and read it because I'm, I'm i just want to get something else on oh no problem i'm going to get this out as well daniel chapter 2 verse daniel two. okay daniel 2 verse uh, verse, verse 46, is it? Yeah, just one. Yeah, I'm just trying to get. Right, it says Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel okay. and commanded that they should offer the oblation and sweet odor unto him. Okay. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of the truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seize cold has revealed the se this secret. So here we can. So if you want to be consistent and say that Jesus received worship and he didn't object and that makes him God, then you have to say that this, this Daniel in this verse is God because he did not object worship. He didn't say, excuse me, what are you doing? I'm, I'm not the creator of the heavens and the earth. You need to worship the father. No, he didn't say that. Yeah. He accepted. Yes. So this is the reason why we have to go back to the language. Okay. Would That's you agree? Fine. I agree 100%. Yeah. Good. So let me, let me just, okay, go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay, so the language is important because the word proskunio is used here. Yes. And if you go to the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament, the word homage is used. That's why in some translations. Yeah. Oh my God, what's going on? Oh. This place is, now you understand why I moved. Sure. Because I didn't why? want us to be but a part of this. Why are these guys doing these things? It's always causing trouble. Anyway. Yeah, go on. So. Worship is only for the Creator. When we okay. receive worship, it's only for, for the Creator Himself. It is not for the creation. The worship that Jesus received is a worship of paying respect, paying homage, being uh, respectful, you know? Okay. And that's, that's, that's basically the understanding of the word proskunio, is to receive homage. Okay. Let me stop yeah. you on that on, on that note. Okay, so you're saying because I'm going to go to that. Um, let's let's say the uh, I, I mentioned worship in um, Ma uh, Matthew 14 verse 33. So let me go there and just okay. read the verse because I just want to make a point quickly. Okay, go ahead. So listen to this now. What 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 happened? So uh, so so the disciples are in a boat. There's okay. a storm that's broken out. Okay. They see Jesus walking to them, and then. 
you, you know, he. Let's see what he did. Uh, he said on the he said on the water it is I don't be afraid and then he says to Peter come walk on the water. <clears throat> Peter goes and walks on the water, and eventually he starts sinking because he was afraid of the waves. Yeah. Then it says, when they came into the ship, the wind ceased. So the storm that was there, it stopped. Yeah. Now this is the verse that I, I quoted, and I'm going to read it again. It says in, it. Yeah, yeah. in verse 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God, right? So you're saying that this word is only for respect. That's what you just said, right? Yeah. But however, that word, it says they worshipped him. However, the same word is found in Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, and this is what it says in Matthew chapter 4. Yeah. What's it say? It says in verse... Uh, it says in verse 8, The devil takes him up into exceeding high mountain, shows him the kingdoms of the world and the glory, and says to him, All these things will I give unto you if you fall down and worship me. Same word as you found in Matthew chapter 14. Then he says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Yeah. So the worship that Jesus received is not the worship of respect, as you just said, it's the worship that the devil actually used. No, no, no. It's the I, same word. It's not the same word. I'll tell you why. But I'm what, just looking at it in what, strong. What, give right me the, now. What's the Greek for that? Okay, I'll give, I'll give it to you right now. Okay. So it's... Let me go into it. Prosk, proskino. That's the Matthew 14 when he's in the boat, right? Okay. That's Matthew 14. But now the other one is this. If you will fall down and worship me. The same thing that the devil wanted. Let's give it a second. Proskinio. Same same thing. So hold right. on, so let me just finish my point. Oh, okay. So wh what I find is um, where I mentioned already with Acts how Peter said, Don't do that. So what I find is in Hebrews chapter one, and again this is coming to scriptures which Muslims may not accept. Hebrews chapter one, listen to this, and this for me is the clearest evidence yeah. of why worship belongs to God but Christ also received worship listen to this this is what it says okay. you may know the scripture already but I'll read it anyway go, just ahead, go ahead yeah yeah it's fine so in Hebrews chapter 1 it says but for unto which of the angels said he at any time you are my son this day have I begotten thee again I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son and again when he bringeth the first begotten into the world he saith and let all the angels of God worship him so for me, when I study the Bible, when I say line upon line, precept upon precept, I'm saying I look at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, I look at Matthew, I look at James, I look at I look through the Bible and I make a decision upon what the whole of the Bible is saying. Yeah. And what I see is that Jesus received worship from the angels, Jesus received worship from men, and at no time, in fact, here it says the Father is saying, okay. worship him. So in Daniel, yeah. when when Daniel received worship yes. in Daniel chapter 2. Yeah. Then if you want to be consistent, yes. then we have to say that Daniel is God. However, but that's Hebrew. So what is the Hebrew word for worship there? Right, exactly. Right. This is exactly the point I'm making. Okay. So this is where consistency is very important. Right. Now the word proskuno yes. doesn't just have one meaning. Right, okay, go right? on. Proskuno has multiple meanings. Yes. Right? So therefore, we have to choose carefully what the true intended meaning yes. of the verse is. Of course. Right? Yes. Because then if we was to if I was to go strictly by your logic and your follow-up, yes. then I could say Daniel is God himself. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, go hold on. on. This is why this is why context is crucial at Very this point. important. Very right? important. I accept that. I accept that. Right. So Yeah, go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, go on. So context is really important. So when we look at the word proscunio, uh, Put, oh, okay. That's okay. I just don't know me. <laughs> just put it on somewhere. Okay, just put it on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go on. So the context. Right. So when we look at Proscuno, it right. First of all, yeah. we have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bear with me one second. Okay. Bear with me one second. Okay. Yeah, go on.
this is deep, man. Right. So basically, when we look at the Old Testament, right? When we look at the Old Testament, we see that there are numerous verses that speak about God being one and that you should have no other God besides Him, right? For example, I believe in Exodus chapter 20, right? Yes. It says, you shall have no other God before me, right? So that means worship only belongs to the Creator alone, right? Would you agree with this? I agree with that. Right. You're not allowed to worship any other being other than the Creator, right? And God has made this clear in multiple verses, and I will read some of these verses for you. And then we'll go back to the word proskuna, and then okay, we'll, we'll try to um, contextualize this okay, correctly. That's, that's okay. Uh, I don't know what's happening there, but it uh, sounds oh, no. exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It says here, right? This is why context is really important, and we'll, we will understand. Right. In Deuteronomy chapter six, uh, chapter six, verse four, it says, "Here is Israel, the Lord is our God. Lord is one." Wow. Right. Uh, it says, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35, To you it was shown that you might know that the Lord, He is God, there is no other besides Him. Do you, do you accept that? I accept it. Good. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 39, See now that I am He, and there is no God besides Me. It is I, who put to, it's I that put to death and give life. I have wounded... I have wounded and it is I who heals and there is no one who can deliver from my hand. So I've just given you just a few extracts yeah. Yeah, yeah. of no, the I Old get, Testament I get, I get the point. that I says get. that God is alone, deserves to be worshipped. So how do we contextualize these verses in the light of Jesus receiving worship, right? Now the word proscunio has multiple meanings and this is the reason why. Okay, so when you um, pointed out to me uh, that the devil said in one verse that you know you shouldn't worship me but you should worship the father yes i'm just summarizing yes yes and yes. then obviously you mentioned in matthew that jesus received worship and he didn't object yes now we have to contextualize the bible as a whole to understand 100%. okay which worship was the worship that jesus received which worship did daniel receive etc okay we look remember at, just with just quickly on that note remember yeah. with daniel that's the Old Testament, so it's a different language. So we need to look up that word in the Hebrew, because it was in Hebrew. No, if we go, no, if we go to the uh, the Septuagint. Yes. The Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament. Yes. You have you heard of the Septuagint? I've heard of it. Okay, so okay. Right. Yes. So the the, the word proskunio is yes. used here. Oh, in, in the in case. the Septuagint. Okay, that's Daniel right. chapter that's two. That's right. I didn't know that. Okay. Let's okay. Go. So if we look at the word worship here. Yeah. Worship, adoration, or devotion. Okay. So it has multiple meanings. Yes. So you have to understand which one did Jesus receive. Of course. Now, of course. given the light of the verses that I read before in the yeah. book of Deuteronomy, chapter yes. 6, verse 4, yes. we can say that Jesus received the worship of respect. The reason why I am saying this is because in the other verses, right? Yes. God says here, you should not have any other God before me. So if you believe that the, the, uh, the disciples of Jesus was worshipping Jesus as actual God, then this clearly conflicts with Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. This clearly conflicts with... Uh, can, can I just stop you there? 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. For, for, for there is one God and one mediator, right? also between God and man, and that is the man Jesus. So Jesus is seen as the mediator. He's not seen as God himself. Okay. Do you follow? Okay, I follow what you're saying, okay. but I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that statement. Okay, why do you okay. disagree? So, first of all, you said the context is important, and you read verses from Deuteronomy where you're dealing with the Creator, the one Creator. But who is that one Creator? The, exactly. The Father is always considered as the Creator, right? Not Are you sure? In the Bible? Of course, because in the begin it says in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created. God, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, let there be light and there was light, right? Yeah. But John chapter 1 elaborates on that. 
where it says John 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay. So who is that word? John 1 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay. So for me, when I'm looking at Jesus, it's not simply only they came and worshiped him. It's that the Bible tells us that the word is the one that created all things. And it is that word that became flesh. It's Jesus Christ because the Revelation 19 tells us that the word is Christ. Okay. So, so if we go to John 1 1, right? Yeah. It says in the beginning was the word. Yes. Right. And the word was with God. Yes. So and who the word was God. Hold on one second. Yeah, Let's God. break this down. Yes. Who was the word with in the beginning? With the father. Right. How many gods does that make that in the beginning? Before, hold on one second. Okay. I want you to understand my question very yes, carefully. Yes. Right. It says, and the word was God. Yes. Before the word was God yes. or became God, how many gods were there in the beginning? Okay. Rephrase the question because I'm, I'm okay. not understanding. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll repeat. It says, in the beginning was the word. Yes. Right. Who was the word here? Jesus. And the word? Who's the word? Jesus. Was with God. With the Father. So who is, who is, when it says, and the word was with God, with who, the is, who is God here? The Father. With the Father, yeah. So in the beginning, how many gods were there in the beginning of time? There were three persons of the Godhead. I'm leaving the Holy Spirit out, but I'm going to say. Wait, hold on. Hold, hold on one second. Three. I'm sure, right. So three there were. beings. Right. So there were three gods. There was three beings of a Godhead, which is made up of one. Oh, hold unit. on one second. One second. There was three. Okay. I don't you, believe you, in three gods. Okay, but let's break this but down. But I believe in three persons of one God. Here. Wait, one second. That sounds crazy. But Ridwan, that's what it, I believe. Ridwan, it, does, it doesn't make... Unfortunately, yeah. as a logical person like myself, yes. the Bible says in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, hold fast and prove all things. Of course. This is not illogical. And I'll tell you why this is not okay, logical. Can I just stop you there and ask you Go there? Ahead. So why then in Genesis chapter 1 does it say, let us make man in our image? Why? Okay. And don't tell me it's a royal we or a royal us. That, that it doesn't make sense. God is there with the word and, the, and the, they're deciding we want to bring mankind into existence. Okay. So my belief, and this is why I'm saying we're going to run into a, an issue here. Yeah. We can discuss and, and share, but we're going to run into an issue. And the, the reason I'm saying this is because when I look at the prophets of the Bible, okay. there's some prophets you as a Muslim are not going to accept, even Give, though I, expect, right. I accept it. You According to Rabbi Tovia Singer, okay. right? Do you know Rabbi Tovia Singer? No, I don't know. Right, he's a very uh, intellectual uh, Jewish scholar, okay. a rabbi. Yes. And he explained Genesis one twenty six. Yeah. Right. He said, "Let us, yes, right, make man in our image after our our likeness." Yes. Right. Now, the word "us" here. Yeah. He interprets it, and then I advise you to. Research this man. Okay. He's a very well-respected Jewish scholar, okay. right? Okay. He, he uses the word us to mean yeah. that he is addressing the angels. Let us make man in our image. But notice, if you read the rest of the verse, what does it say? After our likeness and let them have dominion over me. Is that what it says? No, read the rest. Okay, let's get up Genesis okay. 126. Yeah. Because you feel that God is addressing the triune God, Godhead, triune right? God. Okay, let's let's, right. let's check this out to see whether it's true or not. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse twenty. Hold on, bear with me. Verse one twenty six. Okay. Right. And then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and of the air and over the cattle and over all earth and over every creeping thing. Right. Uh, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in what does it say here? His own image. His image. Yeah. It didn't say our image. It says that God created man in his image. So again, it's referring to the singular. 
Okay. So when God, this is what I'm saying, I think biblical exegesis is really important. Yes, because, I and, and, and I think what you should do is consult what the Jewish scholars think of this verse, because this is their book. And Jewish scholars will think that you as a Christian is manipulating, I'm not saying you personally, okay, that's right. that you are creating an interpretation that doesn't exist. What you're doing is something called eisegesis. You are bringing out an interpretation that doesn't exist in that text. Okay. You're, what you have to do is exegesis, is that you have to produce evidence within the text. And this is what I was saying. So this is how the Jewish, this is the Jewish understanding that when God said, let us, he is making, um, he is announcing to the angels that let us create man in his image after our likeness. But if you notice at the end of the verse, it says, and let, and God created man in his image. So it goes back to the singular form. It doesn't go to the plural form. He didn't say, and God created man in our image. He said, let God, let man, God created man in his image. Right. Now, there's another interpretation that could be taken is also what you said earlier, which is the royal we. Okay. Right? In fact, in the Quran, Allah actually makes an address in the Quran. Now, Allah sometimes in the Quran uses the plural pronoun. Like, for example, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانُ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ Verily, we created man. And we know, and we know, and we know, and we are closer to him to, uh, than his juggler vein, right? right? But of, of course, as Muslims, we believe that Allah is one. So when Allah says, when Allah uses the word nahnu, for example, Allah says, nahnu we've created. We are closer to him than his juggler vein but he perceives it not. So the point I'm trying to address here is that when God identifies the word we, it is understood to mean that he is talking about an us of respect. Like for example, you know the queen in this yes. country? Yes, right? that's what I was yes? saying. Yeah, I understand. How does God, uh, sorry, how does, God, how does the queen yeah. address her royal courtier? Does she, yeah, we. does she address it in the plural pronoun or does she address it in the singular pronoun? Plural. Right. Does it mean that when she is addressing her royal courtier in the plural pronoun, does it mean that when she's making that address, there's more than one queen? No. Exactly. No. Right. So you have to understand the bit, the Bible in its correct understanding how it is supposed to be understood. You are, unfortunately, I feel that you are understanding the text from a Trinitarian understanding. Because when God says, let us, you are taking that, it's talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Yes. But my contention is this, right, Ridwan, is that the explicit verse that speaks about the triune nature of God yes. is in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. It says, there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay. The Father, yes. the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Okay. Are you aware that this verse has been taken out as a fabrication? Yes, and I never use that verse. Okay. So I don't believe in that verse. Right. So why, why, why? Okay. So I have a question for you, Ridwan. <laughs> why have they taken that verse out as a, uh, as honest, a fabricated verse? As, uh, to be honest, I have no idea. I've not looked into it or researched it. I'm not, I'm not interested in, I'm not, I'm not interested, but I haven't looked into it. But I have heard but do you know, okay, go on, that it is, it is an, a verse that was added. Now, let me tell but you, do you why. Okay, so do you think that this is a corruption of the text? Because look, if there are verses that's been added and yeah. there's verses that's been taken out and there's verses that are considered as fabricated, there's verses that's considered as um, an interpolation, why would you then believe? I mean, this is the most explicit formulation of the Trinity, by the way. That right. verse. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is the right. most explicit. All yeah. the other verses are quite implicit. People try to gather here and there. Okay, it might mean this. But this is the most explicit verse that talks about the triune well, Godhead. Yeah, that's but it. this verse has been taken out as a complete fabrication. Okay. Right? Why, why is this? If this is the most explicit form of belief that you have, this is, this does, does this not raise um, a concern to you that 
It does raise a concern. Um, okay, why does it raise a concern? It raises a concern because obviously we want to have a book that is trustworthy, first of all. Thank you, um, okay. So we don't want any... Um, I don't want to have to study my Bible and then think, is this okay and is this not okay? I believe that the Bible is the infallible Word of God. Infallible meaning there's no error in that Word. But we found an error though. We did find an but, error. But, but Ridwan, yeah. that's not the only error that's found. Okay, hold on a second before we go there, okay. because we're not yes. dealing with errors. No, no, I know. No, no, no. I, I agree this, with you. Yes. The thing is this, if we, go by, if we go by that route, or let me not say that, let me say this. I'm not going to that verse because I can see from other verses of Scripture why I believe in this. For example, okay. you quoted Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 earlier. You said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's Deuteronomy 6 4. But that word one, also in Genesis chapter 2, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his, his mother and father and cling to his wife, and they twain shall be one. So you can have in the Bible two individuals coming together and being one. So it's not wrong for me to understand when God says He's one, that there could be more than one in the Godhead, according to the Bible. Okay, let Do me, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I understand. I so, understand. So for me, I'm not looking at First John 5 and saying that's my belief. I'm looking at other portions of Scripture which indicate to me that the Father is divine, Jesus is divine, and the Holy Spirit is divine. For example, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, until 20, you will find the Holy Spirit mentioned repeatedly. In Acts chapter 13, verse 1, Paul and Silas, before they go on their mission trip, it says, the Holy Ghost said to them, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, and they obeyed. But in Acts chapter 5, verse 2, it says, we ought to obey God rather than men. So they obeyed the voice of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So there is repeated evidence in the, old, in, the old, in the New Testament as yeah. well, that the Holy Spirit has divine prerogatives. In other words, it is divine. Okay. And there's repeated evidence for me in the Old and the New Testament that Jesus is divine. Now, okay. I need can, to... I need can to, I respond to some of... Okay. Because I don't okay. want to forget some of the things that... Okay, go on, continue, continue. Okay, oh, I've got a problem here. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, the thing is this, my brother. The reason why <laughs> I feel that... Uh, you know, if, if we continue, that's why I'd rather discuss something else where we can talk about some practical issues in life. Because as I, as I said before... No problem. If, if, okay, I want to respond to something okay, that you mentioned. Okay, go on, respond. Then maybe, okay, before you may do, let me say one more thing. One more, one more other thing. Go ahead. Um, you know, when you look at the New Testament, Jesus comes in the New Testament, yeah. right? Can I read just two scriptures for you, please? Okay. So, um, John 10, verse 30. Okay. Jesus says, I and my Father are one. That's what he says, right? Now, I could say I'm one with the Father, I'm walking with him, and you know, I'm one with him. But listen to what happens next. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? Why do you want to stone me? The Jews answered him saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Now what was the blasphemy? He had just said, I and my father are one. We're not stoning you because you're doing good works. We're stoning you for blasphemy. What's the blasphemy? You said, I and my father are one. Listen to what they said. Okay. Because that thou, it says, uh, for, for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. When did he claim to be God? He didn't claim anywhere, I don't see anything, but when he said, I and my father are one, they understood that in the Hebrew mindset, that yeah. this man is claiming divine, he's claiming to be divine. Okay. But hold on a second, one more. John chapter 8, two chapters before that. This is the most profound for me to understand that Jesus is God. Please now watch this. So Jesus is speaking to the Jews who they hate, that the Jews hated Jesus. Because he was righteous, he was living a righteous life. Listen to what he says. He says in verse 58, it says, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Then further on down, he says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Hold on. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day? What did he mean? Now he goes on, he says, But then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? They're like, you only were born 50 years ago. Abraham was a couple of thousand years ago. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, hold on a second. 
what does Jesus mean when he says, before Abraham was, I am? Okay. Well, next verse, he says, then took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out to the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Now, my question is, yeah. what did Jesus mean when he said, before Abraham was, I am? That phrase, I am, when you look it up in Hebrew, in, the, in, in Moses' time, it means the self-existent presence of Jehovah. It means the self-existent presence of God. Jesus took upon himself the name of Jehovah, the name of God, the self-existent God. No other human being can take upon, him that, uh, upon himself that title. But Jesus did. He said, yeah. before Abraham was I am. That's why the Jews wanted to stone because they wouldn't have stoned him if he just said, before Abraham was I am. And they just thought, okay, he's just claiming to be, maybe understand something. No, they understood by him saying that, you're claiming to be God. Okay. That's what you're claiming. Let, let, let One me. more, please. One more. Okay. One go more. ahead. Go ahead. First Corinthians 10. And then I'm going to try and respond to some of this. Okay. No say. problem. First Corinthians chapter 10. Paul, the apostle, he's talking about ancient Israel. And he's talking about how they, God led them through the wilderness and how they were rebellious. They yeah. kept rebelling against him. Yeah. He would try to lead them and they kept being disobedient. And God destroyed them in the end. Yeah. Listen to this. It says, First Corinthians 10, it says, they all drank that same spiritual drink for they drank that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was christ right okay christ followed them yeah in the wilderness yeah. how did jesus do that because jesus was born in the new testament two thousand years after the israelites so how did jesus lead the children of israel why because jesus according to scripture was there following or was there leading the children of israel yeah so when moses in exodus chapter 25 when god says my angel will go before thee that angel when you study it out in the scripture yeah. he's holy and it says my name is him and my character is in him that was christ that led the children of israel okay. when they were tempting god they were tempting christ let me respond so, let me respond to some of the things let me conclude by saying okay so conclude, my belief yeah. Yeah. from the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, is that Jesus is one with the Father in nature, in purpose and character to save the human race. So I believe there are three living persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. That is my belief okay. from the Bible. Let's, okay, so let me deal with some of the points you've raised. Okay? Yeah, go on, go on. Right, so basically you mentioned, right, um, that the word, when it says, you mentioned earlier that when a man leaves his wife, Yes. And, you know, that they should become one. one? Yeah. Right. Now, again, language is important here. Okay. Right? Go on, go because on. if we look at the language, when it ever... Remember the verses that I read to you earlier, right? Yes. In yes, the book yes. of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Yes. The book of Isaiah, the, the first book of Timothy. It says that God is the only true God. Yes. John 17, verse 3. It says that the Father said, that, the, uh, that Jesus said that the Father is the only true God. Right. Remember so, so, so... Whenever it comes to the worship of God, okay. right? Do you know the Shema? No. Right. What is the Shema? The Shema you know? is the testification of faith, which is in Hebrew, it is Shema Israela, Edenai Elohinu, Edenai Echad. Hear Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay. The word Echad, whenever it comes to the unity of God, it doesn't have a compound unity in nature. Do you understand what I mean? When I say compound unity, God cannot have, uh, there cannot be more than one God when it comes to the Creator. So when God uses the word Echad, when it comes to God, it doesn't have a compound unity. It is a singular in meaning, okay. right? Okay, I'll now, have to look there, that up because I don't know. Okay, I didn't look, 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 yes, look that's up. Fine. There's two types of ones in, yes. in, in Hebrew. There's yes. Yaqid, yes. Yaqid yes. which has a compound unity, and there's Echad, which has a strict monotheistic understanding to it. So, so when, what, what does that mean? So that means one? Like the one. word Yaqid. Yes. So for example, you know that verse where you mentioned that when a mother, uh, when, when a, when a, um, a wife. Oh, uh, your husband leaves yeah, his mother, that, mother. They yes. shall become one. Yes. In some translations, you will find the Hebrew word used here is Yahid, because the word Yahid can have a compound unity in meaning. Right? So that means it has another meaning. It has a, yes, it has okay. another meaning. Okay, go on. However, when it comes to the articulation of the Creator, yes. when the word one is used here, it yes. doesn't have a compound unity. So, for example, when in Deuteronomy 6, uh, 6 verse 4, yeah. when it says, um, Hear Israel, is the Lord our God is one. 
it cannot have a compound unity because God, remember, you have to contextualize the whole Bible as a whole. Okay. Because it cannot, the Bible cannot be seen to contradict itself as yes. you, you, you agreed yes, on. This is what I So agree. you have to take other verses into account to see whether what you're holding is true or not, yes. right? So when it comes to God, God is not a compound unity. God is singular and he is wahid, he is one. He is Echad, and the word Echad, ask any Jew, there's so many Jews here. Okay. The word Echad can only mean one. It does not have a compound unity in definition. Okay. That's point number one. Okay. Point number two, you mentioned John chapter 10, verse 30, yeah, where yeah. Jesus, uh, uh, they stoned Jesus for blaspheming. Well, they right? wanted to stone him, yes. Okay, they wanted to stone him, yes. right. But before that, you mentioned John chapter 10, verse 30, where Jesus said, I, I and my father, father are one. Yes, okay. right. Now, again, what does the word one in because remember John wrote his gospel in what language? Greek. Right. Give me the word one in this sentence Interesting. and contextualize it for me correctly. So so what so what? Do I need to get it on the on, on the strongs, you mean? Or what what, what do you right. mean? What I'm trying to say yeah. is that the Greek word used here is henna. Okay. Henna in Greek means one in purpose and not one in essence. And I'll and I will demonstrate this verse. I will demonstrate this with a verse. Okay. If we go to John chapter 17, verse 21. Go to, take your Bible out. John 17. John 17, yeah. Verse 21, I believe. Okay, yes. Powerful verse. Thank you. That's what we need to be. We need to be one, my brother. <laughs> right. So if we go to John. Yeah. 17, hold on, bear with me. Yes, that's verse, one, verse 21. Right. It says here, boom. right, that they may all be one. Who's all here? That's the disciples. Right. Yes. Even as thou, Father, art in me. Yeah. Remember in John chapter 10, verse 30, it says, I, my Father, are one. Yes. So when. When it says here that they may all be one, even as thou father art in me. So this is actually referring to John 10 30, where Jesus said, I and my father are one. Yes, yes. Would yes. you agree or disagree? So no, wait. Okay, wait. okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean like the, the unity? Yeah, the unity. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna agree with that. Okay, Although, no, I'm gonna let me tell you why I don't agree. But finish, okay, finish right, your point okay. first. Right. If you're gonna say that John chapter 10, verse 30 is is proof that Jesus is God, because he said that he, he and his father are, hold on. So when Jesus said, John, when in John chapter 10, verse 30, when Jesus says, I, my father, are one, do you take that as an evidence that Jesus is God? I'm not actually taking that particular verse, but I'm taking what happened after. No, I know, remember no I know that. I know remember that. now, but, because they now saying, because if you look back at the verses before that. I understand that. But I'm, I'm asking you something quite specific. Yeah. Do you take that verse to mean that he is God in John 10, 30? Or are you saying that it means one in unity? I believe one in unity. Okay, fine. No problem. However, but I need to add something because okay. remember now what happened after he made that statement. After he makes that statement, he said, they, they said, hold on, we're going to stone you for blasphemy. Why? Because you're a man, but you're making yourself God. But where did he make himself God? Hold on. By him claiming to have oneness with the father. No problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> okay. So okay. if I say I and my father are one, I'm one with the father, nobody's going to do anything. They're going to say, okay, we're trying to reach that unity as well. Okay. But when Jesus made it, they the Hebrew mind said, Hold on, are you, to be God. are you are you asserting that when Jesus said, I'm my father, are one, he's blaspheming? I'm saying no, I'm saying that the Jews thought that he was blaspheming. No, do you think, okay, do because you, they said that uh, they said that you're blaspheming now, we're gonna stone you. Wait, hold on, we will yeah. get there, we'll get there. Okay, do you believe as a Christian that Jesus is a blasphemer? No, right. Do you know what the word blaspheme means? It means to lie against God. It means, in this context, it means to say something about God that you have no knowledge of. Right? Okay, but Hold also on. in the Bible, blasphemy means when you're a man, but you're claiming to be God. That's blasphemy. Okay, hold on okay, one, second. On. one second, on. one second, one second. Right, it says here, uh, the glory with, oh, hold on one second, verse 21. That they may all be one, even as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Yes. So who is us here? Well, he's talking to the father, so him and the father. Right. She's talking about the disciples being one in that unity. Yes. Right. So now, if you are asserting that Jesus is God, hold on one second, hear me out first. Okay. Let because me... I understand that you take the other section of yeah. the accusation that they made against Jesus as him being God, because that's what they thought of him. Okay. Right. Now, for consistency, 
when, jo- when Jesus said, I and my father are one, right? The Greek word used here is henna, which means one in purpose and not one in essence, right? This is very important because in this particular verse, so what was, it, it shows... Okay, go on. Hold, go on. hold on one yeah, second. Go on, go on. Trust me, you would understand eventually what I'm trying to get at. Okay, yeah, no problem. Right. We will not say that the disciples of Jesus are God. Can we say no, that? we're not saying that, no, no. But even though Jesus said that they art in me like the Father arts in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's but right. you're not going to say that they are God, right? No, no, the no. point is the unity. Exactly, okay. thank you. That's yeah. point number one. I'm glad we agree on this. Yes. We're talking about the unity and not the oneness in essence. Yes, I right. agree with that. Right. Point number two. If I made an accusation against you, yeah. right? If I accuse you of, let's say, theft, yeah. you robbed the bank down the road, yeah. and we have 10 witnesses, yeah. 10 fraudulent witnesses, yes. and they all testified against you, does it mean that our testimony is true against you? No, it what? could be false. What, why is that? Because you may have robbed the bank or you may not have robbed the bank. But you know you didn't rob the bank, right? Okay, yeah, that's, that's it. But if you have 10, te- 10 people that are testifying against you, yeah. does it make it true? No. Right. When Jesus, okay, so let's go back to this verse. Okay. They said, they accused Jesus of being what? Blasphemous. Blasphemous, yeah. right. They said, you're making yourself to be God. Right. right? This, is that an accusation? Is that not an accusation? It's an accusation, yes. Did Jesus affirm that accusation? Did he say, yes, that's true? No, he didn't, st- he didn't do that. Right. No. Right. The re- what's the reason why he didn't affirm? Okay. This is the reason why I'm saying to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone can accuse you of something. Yeah. But does it necessarily mean the accusation is true? No, it doesn't mean right. that. Right. Okay. So with that said, we're going to go to John chapter 10, verse 30. We're going to read it together. Right. Right. And then if you need to go afterwards, it's fine. Right, yeah, so the sunshine is gone. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. We don't want to miss what's left. Okay, yeah, yeah. It okay, says we're going to summarize. We'll yeah. summarize. We'll, we'll summarize. summarize. Okay, but we'll finish this verse. Okay. Um, verse, right, 30, verse 30. Yeah. Right. The Jews. Hold on a minute. Verse 30. Ah, let's start from verse 29. Let's contextualize it a bit more. My father, who sh- who has given them to me. Right. Yeah. So who has the fa- so the father's given? What has the father given to Jesus? In if this. You, okay. Okay. If you read, let's let's read it from verse twenty-seven because we need okay. to get the whole context. Let's let's because this is deep now. This, this is no deep. problem. I'm glad you brought us okay, here. Okay. No problem. So my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and they follow me. Right. Yeah. So in the Bible, we just a sheep means I'm the leader. You're the followers. You're, you're the flock. Yeah. You're following, right? That's what he's saying there. Yeah. Then he says, and I, Jesus, give unto them eternal life. Yeah. Can Jesus give me eternal life according to that? Okay. According to this verse, it says that. However, brother, <laughs> however, okay. did not Jesus say all power was given to me from the Father? Yes, he said that. Right. So let me ask you this question. Yes. Before the Father gave power to Jesus, yes. did he have the power? Remember now, I'm going to answer clearly, very clearly. When Jesus was in heaven, he was God. In order for him to become a man, in, in order to, for him to give us an example, he had to become a man, to walk in our footsteps. Let me just finish it. Go ahead. So watch now. The thing is this, and this is maybe where a lot of misunderstanding comes in. I believe that Jesus is 100% God. I believe that he came down to this earth to demonstrate to men and to angels that as a man, we can be obedient to the law of wait, God. Wait, 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 Ridwan. I'm asking you a very specific question. When it says here, the, the all power was, was given, given, given to him. him. Yes. All power was given to him. Yes. When Jesus, when, before the power was given to him, did he have the power? As a, he said that as a human being. So yes, he did because he was the almighty God in heaven. But no, hold on. Yes. He said all power was given to him from the father. As a man. Where does it say as a man? Okay, but he became a man. Now hold on one second. Okay. Where does it say as a man that all power is given to him? Does it say this or are you... It is your own interpretation. Okay, it's not an, 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 an own interpretation. So where are you getting this from? Because he's become a man. Because remember I said earlier, right? When he raised the dead, when he healed lepers, when he touched deaf ears, all that was done by faith in God. Wait, hold it on. It wasn't his power. In John chapter Sorry. 5. No, no, it's okay. In John chapter 5, verse yeah. 30. Yeah. What did Jesus say? I can of myself do, do nothing. nothing. This is th- the point. No, but, th- but, th- 
you're making my point. <laughs> but this is what <laughs> I'm saying. No, but hold on a second. This is what I'm saying, and this is where my belief as a Christian, in my particular belief, yeah. my denomination, this is what we believe. Jesus is God. But when he came to this earth, he laid aside his divine power Hold on, so that he could live as a human being. Because as he, had he not done that, then we as human beings would not have an example of how to live a holy life. Hold on, but he on. as God comes down and he says, listen, I'm going to show you as human being, I'm going to live as a human being, being dependent upon the Father. Hold on, because he laid aside his divinity says, to be a man. Right. Says, understand? I understand. I understand. I understand. So that's why he did it as an example for us. I, so when he came down, he said, I can do nothing of myself. I, I understand the point. Okay, go I understand. Now, but read one. It says here, right? I can of myself do nothing. Yes. What is What does that mean to you? What, he what, could not do anything without the Father. Right. Simple. Does God yes. need to act on someone else's power? Is not God independent? Of course. Right. Yes. So if God is independent, he doesn't need help from he anybody. He doesn't need help from nobody. Thank you very much. Yes. So clearly Jesus needed help. Did he not? Right. Now stop there. Wait, wait, hold on one second. He needed help. He needed help. As a man. Hold one second. As a man. When? That's, this is the reason why I was asking this, this question. Saying, go this, on. this is why I was asking this yes. question. So when he says, all power was given to me from the Father. Yes. According to Jesus' own words, he didn't have that power beforehand. He didn't. Okay. So, okay. But, so but, it, but, but you don't have a verse that says that. But, but hold on a second, hold on, let's, let's deal with what you just said right now, right? Okay, hold on, let's analyze this. Okay, if so I said to you, right. No, 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 let's not use human terms. No, no, we, we have deal to. deal with Christ. No, we are. <laughs> listen, Ridwan, listen, listen, we are. But this is why I'm saying, Hamza, check this out now. Ridwan, hold on, Please I want to use this example. Okay, you go. Okay, Ridwan, give you an example. Right. So if I said to you, yeah. this is the phone in my hand, yes. right? I'm giving you this phone yes. to keep. Yes. I don't have any other phone. Yes. Right? Once I've given you this phone, do I have a phone on me? No. It's simple, isn't it? Exactly. No, right. I believe that. Exactly. All power was given unto him in heaven and earth. I Thank believe you. that. Matthew Thank 28. You. Right. So if all power yeah. was given to him from the Father, yes. prove to me that Jesus had the power beforehand. Because if Jesus had the... Hold on, hear me okay. up. <laughs> if Jesus had the power beforehand, yes. why would the Father need to give him power if he had the power already? But this is what I'm saying to you. When the Word became flesh, He laid aside that power. Why? Why did He do that? He had to be an example for humanity. Show me in the Bible that He had the power and He laid it aside. I, I think I've done that already. Let me explain to you. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, Before Abraham was I am. What did He mean when He said I am? That phrase I am means Jehovah, the self-existent no, God. It doesn't. In, in Exodus, go and look it up. It I, means I know. the, the self-existent one. No, 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 no. I tell you why. I tell you why this is. I, I don't agree with this. But right. let me finish my point. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Because you said, show to me that Jesus had the power before. I'm going to give you three evidences which I've already read to you. Number one, when he said, before Abraham was I am, he's saying. The one who saw, when Moses saw that burning bush and Jehovah appeared to him or God appeared to him, that was me. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, I am the Jehovah, no, no, the no. self-existent. Hold on, let me finish. Okay. The second one I showed you in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, God is giving us an, uh, an outline of the children of Israel leaving Egypt and going to the promised land. And it says they followed Christ. And it says they tempted Christ twice in those verses. Was Jesus the one being tempted? Yes, he was, because he was leading the children of Israel. Hold on, one more. So, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. All things were made by him. No one can create all things unless he has omnipotent power. Okay. So my point is this, very clear. Jesus, before he came to this earth, had the power of the Almighty God. Then okay. he, he laid that aside. Why did he lay it aside? First Peter chapter 1, verse 21, it says, For even here unto you were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. How can I follow in the footsteps of a God who is almighty when he comes down to earth? I can't do that because I'm not almighty. But when he chooses to become a man and live as a man and be hungry and thirsty yeah. and tired, then he can be give me okay. an example of let, obedience and holiness in the sight of okay. God. Let me, let me, That's the point. Let me, let me respond to some of the things because you're okay, saying go quite on. a lot. Yeah. So, as I was saying to you before, right? If we look at John chapter 8, verse 58. Okay, right, go on. The summarize Greek, the, now, the, you the, summarize. Please. Okay, hold on one second. Yes, John 8, the, the Greek word used for I am is, what is it? I didn't look it up, I don't know. Okay. The word used here is ego am I. Okay. Right? 
Ego Ema doesn't mean the self-existent one. This is what you claimed. But unfortunately, you didn't back up what you said with any... Okay, let me hold, back hold on one second, one okay. second. I, I was patient. I did okay, listen. that's fine. That's I did fine. listen, Ridwan. No, 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 go on. Hear me out. Right. So, what I'm saying to you, right, is that in John chapter 8, verse 58, right, yeah. it is claimed that Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Okay. Right? Now, the Greek word used here is ego amai. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blind man in John chapter 9, verse 9, mm. used the same Greek wording. Okay as ego amai yeah right the word ego amai do you know what it means what is it mean? means i am the one that's been spoken about okay that's right? fine that's fine i accept that right yeah. i am the one that's been spoken about and okay. i proved to you that was the intended meaning of john 8 58 right so if we go here hold on bear with me i'm going to get the interlinear okay right? you get whatever you want because yeah. okay go on go on Right, here it is. It says, Epen Otios, Yusos, Amen, Yigo Hemen Pren, Abraham, Ego, Amai. Okay, fine. I, right? I see that. I That's fine. Right. So now if we go to John chapter 8, so John chapter 9, hold on one second. Okay, I'm, you finish that point, then okay. I'm just going to raise the up. point on that. And okay. Then, yeah. Okay, so if we go John 9, verse 9. Bear with me. I think my time here at Speaker's Corner is done for the day. Right. Okay, go on. Have you noticed that what the translators have done, they translated it differently, right? Okay. When, when the blind man said this, they translated it as, as a, I am he. Okay, John but 9, then, yeah? John 9, 9. But then when it came to Jesus, they translated it completely differently as I am, right? Which is, okay. I, I, will say that, I will say that this is a disingenuous translation. And it's completely um, disingenuous from the translators. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Right? It says here, this is John 9, 9. Right? Elo elogon ala homusisios esten ekinos Elegin, Hoti, Ego, Amai. I am he. Okay, I am. fine. Now, fine, I see. I we see, um, in this translation, what we see here is disingenuous translation. And I'll tell you why. In John chapter 8, verse 58, they yeah. translated, before Abraham was, I am. Okay. And they took off the word he. Because they wanted to the, the, interpret the people who are translating the Bible, they wanted to make it look that Jesus was God in this particular verse. However, in John chapter 9, verse 9, right, when the same Greek word was used here in John chapter 9, if you open your Bible to John 9, 9, I'm it there. doesn't say I am. There, yeah, I see that. I it see says that. I am. What does it say? I, I am. am. Thank you very much. Okay. Right? We see disingenuous translation. Now, the question is, right, is where does this verse come from? Ooh, if we go in John chapter 8 verse 58. Okay, right? go on. where does John, it come from? Right. If we go to Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. Oh yes. That's yes. where it comes from, yeah? Oh man, you're on it, you're on fire, man. Yeah, I'm on fire, e man. Exodus 3, yeah. Right. Exodus 3 13. Right? Yeah. But first, before we go to Exodus 3 14, I just there's something I want to raise very quickly yeah. in uh, John 8 58. Bear with me. Let's go to John chapter 8, verse 50, and then we were all... The <laughs> I think, guys... Uh... <laughs> all right, hold it, John. And I think these, well, we need to hold be it. careful. Some of them are going to go, and then it's going to cost a lot of money to fix. Okay, so... All right, hold on, bear with me. John 8, 58. It's the last two verses. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. Okay. Right? So it's totally saying that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. So this is like a prophecy that in the future that Jesus was, it says, as it says here, it says, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and he was glad. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. The Jews then said to him, You are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Now, did Jesus claim to have seen Abraham in this verse? 
do you see the top the problem with the Jewish what the Jews were trying to do to him now listen carefully I'm gonna read it again right oh, hold your, you don't need to read it again I know no, no I, I want to read it okay, just you for, go for on, me go yeah? Yeah, yeah, he said your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day yes right so for example so where if, did, where hold, did he see one second Jesus if, day? hold on one second yeah. if I said to you that in 50 years from now yeah. I'm gonna see David okay. in 50 years from now because he's gonna rejoice to see my day okay does it mean that I am actually there in 50 years from now no. I'm actually there physically there no no, no it doesn't no. so it says here right and he saw it and was glad yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like a vision okay you that's can, fine. You, you fair, can, you fair can fair class fair. that as a vision that, that's fair. right so your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day he saw it and was glad. The Jews then said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. First of all, so they Jesus... So like, you, were you living in the days of Abraham? Right. You couldn't have seen him. Right. But did he claim this? Did he say that? Yeah, I was. I saw Abraham. He never said this. He said he rejoiced to see my day. Okay. But he never said I was... Can I tell you where, how he saw him, by the way? Okay, but oh, anyway, hold on one let's second. leave that, that's let's leave that aside. Let's leave that aside. Another. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> The Jews then said to him, you are not 50 years old and have seen Abraham. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am, right? Which is ego amy, right? Okay, I am, yeah, yeah. Now, the word ego amy here, according to the majority of translators, yes. right? It is interpreted that when the word ego amy is used, yeah. it is always with the context, yeah. right? Well, that yes. I am the one that's been spoken about. Okay. It is not with the understanding that he is claiming to be the same divine being as the Creator in John. Uh, so in Exodus three fourteen. Now we're going to go to Exodus three fourteen. Okay, let's go there. Let's go there, and then we can summarize. Let's go to Exodus. I need to make haste. <coughs> you need okay. to go. Uh, yeah, I need to. I need to. Okay. Okay. We'll so do Exodus that. We'll summarize. Fourteen, and then you and then you can share your concluding yeah. uh, thoughts there. Okay. Exodus three, verse fourteen. It says, "Okay, Bismillah, where are you?" Right. Then Moses said to God, "If I had to come to the people of Israel, and say to them." The God of your father has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? <clears throat> Sorry. What shall I say to them? God said, now, do you know the Hebrew word used here? I don't know the word, but I... It's really important, because in order to understand whether I'm Jesus... I'm going to go there now and check it out. But I know that it, uh, that it means, when he said, I am, it means the self-existent one. No. Okay, I'm going the, to read the it word. Anyway. Hold on. Yeah, go on, go on. You are, you are right, but I tell you in what part you are right. Okay, go on. Right. Go on. If we go to the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament. Yeah. Right. The word ego, amai, ho on. Yeah. The word ho on means the self-existent one. Okay. Right. Yeah. Jesus did not claim that he was ho on. He simply said ego, amai. And in Greek, what that means is that he is the one that's been spoken about. Okay. If we go to the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament, and I'm going to prove this from the language itself, right? Wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. Hold on. Uh, bear with me. Exodus 3, 14. In... This is so powerful. Right. It says here, right. So if we go to the, the Greek, so if we go to the Hebrew, yeah. right? It's Ehye, Esher Ehye, right? Okay. Which means I am that I am. If yeah. you translate it in the Greek, if you yeah. go to the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament, yeah. the word ego, amai, ho on. 
Okay. Now, the word Ho'on in Greek means that I am the self-existent being. Okay. The right. word Ho'on is used here. Right. The word Ego Eimai, which, John, which Jesus used in John chapter 8, verse 58, yeah. is not the intended meaning of, here. Of course, okay, I get that. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I just want to suspend you. Yeah. That's not the intended meaning here, that he was claiming to be the self-divine being. Because we can see in John chapter 9, verse 9, that I am the, was referred to by the the blind. Man. Thank okay, you very I much. Am. Thank you, and praise God that you understand this, because I try to explain this to someone that they I didn't know, I understand. I get what you're saying. So what I'm saying is that when it comes to Jesus, Jesus is considered to us as Muslims, and I'm sure as you know, you no, know, you need to go, and I'm taking that into consideration. No, that's God, fine. That's fine. That we believe that Jesus is the prophet of God. We do not take him as a divine being. Yeah. And inshallah, what I'm hoping for, and I will pray for you, Ridwan, yeah. right? That Allah, in his infinite mercy, he guides you back to the fold of Islam, you know? Because it's a beautiful religion. And maybe if you have any questions in the future, we can have this lovely conversation. Because I think that this has been a very respectful conversation. This, is, this has been a blessing. It's been a you blessing. Know? And I always will take into account, because there's things that I've learned here, you've showed me from my own book. Um, so I'll consider them. There's one thing that I that I wanted to say about that last point that you made. Go ahead. Maybe I'll save it for another time. All right, Ridwan. Hamza, it was good to talk. Yeah. We'll catch up next time. Inshallah. Thank you Take so care much, of yourself, brother. Yes, Take man. Care. Blessings. Blessings. Sorry about my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, was salatu was salam, ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. You know it is, yeah. Um, I've just speak, been speaking to Ridwan. Ridwan is a very respectful brother and inshallah I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy guides him. He's a very uh, good brother. I've seen him in a park a few times, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides him back to the fold of Islam. And inshallah, for those people who, are, who viewed this conversation, please make dua for him and please, please refrain from making any negative comments about him, please. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da in hadaytana wa habala la mila dunka rahma innaka anta wahab. Rabbana innaka jami unnasi liyo mila rai bafi. Inna Allah la yuki filmi ad. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati wa amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.